Mix here. Decided to do another set review. I've got some sniffles, so I figured I might as well just go ahead and chill alone for a while and crack a few cold ones and hope that that decongests the sniffles a little bit. And while I'm feeling fresh and goofy, I figure I can uh, use that energy to good use. Uh, use to good, you know what I mean. But anyway, I'm just getting warmed up. But I thought it'd be neat to show you guys to review a set that's not out in paper. It's actually a set that, well, it was originally out in paper, but then re-released online. This is going way back to my early days of Magic the Gathering. Not quite the first set, but like the second or third one. I mean, I my first set was Ice Age, and then I got a couple of the other like sets that were floating around, because there was a bunch of different sets at that point. There was like Chronicles and Antiquities, uh, but those were like more expensive or whatever at the time, you know. And then there's Tempest and Mirage and Visions and Weatherlight and Stronghold, and Exodus, all those different packs that were available at the same time when I started playing Magic, uh, like, or near, you know, like, I got started right, I think it was about the time Tempest was still going on, but, uh, yeah, I bought Ice Age, that was just the first thing I got. Anyway, I'm here at Scryfall, so I want to show you guys one of my favorite, favorite sets, uh, I'm about to sneeze. Maybe. The screen is so bright. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't want to do that. What? No, why? Sorry, guys. <laughs> share the frustration with me here. Sorry, I shouldn't make you guys share the frustration with me here. That's not really nice of me to do as a content creator on YouTube. I'll try to think more about you guys' eyes here. All right, look. Putting Popper Legal... Set. Here we go. We're going to review Tempest Remastered. Because why not? I'm just going to go through and tell you what cards are playable and which cards are just, just pure limited horseshit from back in the day. Aftershock. Four mana for combined four costs, two and two red. Destroy target artifact, creature, or land. It deals three damage to you. Yeah, only going to see fringe play and like some mono red land destruction or something. Uh, I, I got to fix that. That's going to get on my nerves. I'm not going to be holding my phone straight up and down the whole time I'm doing this with you guys. Anarchist. A red mnemonic wall. Except he's a 2-2. Two -two. Four and a red will get you a... Anarchist, 2-2, two -two, Human Wizard, when he enters the battlefield, you may return target sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. Sorcery only, eh. But then again, a lot of red spells are sorceries. I mean, blow up a land, then play Anarchist, and then blow up another land. Or creature, or... <laughs> or artifact. Ah. But, uh, Gorilla Shaman just works way better. Anyway. Uh, Angelic Blessing. Sorcery. Two and a white. Gets you a target creature. Plus three, plus three. And fly until in a turn. Not worth it. I mean, yeah. There's just so many better cards. Anoint. It's a buyback. Gain life one. Uh, that might be useful in like a Azurius Tron or something. Or like Pestilence maybe. Armored Pegasus. Another so-so card. Two for a one-two flying. Hey. The only card. I mean Tribal Pegasus. But why would you go Tribal with Pegasus? I don't know. Uh, Armor Sliver. To be honest I've never played this card. I've had it. But uh, all slivers get plus zero, plus one, until in a turn for two mana. I mean, could be good in a Celestia silver sliver popper build, but probably not popper playable. I mean, as far as, like, 
yeah, Anarchist isn't even hardly proper playable. Bandage, not proper playable in my opinion. I mean, prevents one damage. For, and you draw a card. Barb Sliver. Uh, all Slivers, all Sliver creatures have two. This creature gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn. So that could be good in a, like a Boros, you know, that Barb Sliver, throw that Barb Sliver and that armor sliver together and you got um yeah that's kind of neat not it's a whole new set bottle gnomes sack for three this card was used in ducks back in the day uh it's i don't know cannibalize it's popper playable, even though they printed it as uncommon in this reprint set. It was originally printed common, and I I played with this card back in the day. I haven't played it in anything popper lately, but it could be used. Um, Kennedy Spider, uh, not really good. I mean... Canyon Wildcat is, I don't know, I wouldn't play with it, I wouldn't sideboard it, that's just me, I mean, limited play is a whole different ball game, and that's what most of these cards are for, so far we got, as far as possibly popper playable, we got Cannibalize, where you choose two target creatures, controlled by the same player, exile one of those creatures, and then put two plus one, plus one counters on the other. So that works beautifully, except that it's a sorcery. If it was an instant, it would just be like too, too good, <clears throat> too powerful. I mean, you know, Ulamog's Crusher and a one-one chump blocker. Yeah, cannibalize the Crusher and get the one-one chump blocker plus two plus two. I don't care. Otherwise, I, you know, and then like yeah, you have two chumps or like two plant tokens even cannibalize one to the, you know. And that works good for, like, the Aristocrats builds. You could brew with that. You could brew with Capsize. I mean, all day long, I love that card. It's three to, to Boomerang or six to buy back a Boomerang. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Uh, usually, you only see one or two in, in a build. It's usually in the Tron decks or Teachings decks. Um, anyway, I love that sh shit out of that card it's like blast from the past one of my favorites carnophage super aggro super great one drop black usable as hell not much else to say about it except for that one life return thing but if you got a sack outlet then that's even better charging paladin <laughs> i personally don't remember this card actually ever I don't remember ever seeing this card. 3 for a 2-2. Two, two. Whenever it attacks, it gets plus 0, plus 3. So it's a 2-5 for 3. That's actually not bad. I wonder if it's originally printed in Tempest at all. But, uh, yeah, that's 3 for a 2-5 whenever it attacks. Uh, it's just, yeah, I don't know. Still not very playable. Clot Sliver is more playable than the other ones we've seen because it's 2 for a 1-1 one, one that has two to colorless to regenerate uh, corrosion or uh, corrosion or whatever it's like the yeah discard a card you choose a card from your player opponent's hand instead of you know limitations it's just two more and I I wouldn't really play with it though. I used to play with it back in the day when we had uh, enchantments that would deal damage when cards were discarded. I really would like to see the days where I could play that kind of deck again. Um, although, you know, there are, it is a viable, uh, what do you call that? Type, I guess? I don't know, whatever. It's a viable, a viable. Valuable, viable variation that you could definitely veer into. Ha, huh, there, there's a lot of V's. You know, just a sacrifice, uh, not sack. What is it? Discard heavy hand deck. 
Just hate hand hate deck. Whatever. I mean that's you know, just like land destruction or counter magic. Coiled Tin Viper. My friend used to play that card. I never played it. I don't think it's playable. Just two and first strike. Could take care of a lot of crap in the format, but just nah. Might as well be two two, but still it's three. Three for a bear. No thanks. Uh, conviction. Yeah, I don't know. That's okay. I guess that's counterspell. Obviously, I shouldn't have to say a fucking word about that. Craven Giant can't block. It's a four one for three. If only you were first strike. Ah, still. Uh, not very playable, but yeah, I don't know. I'd I'd brew with it a couple times, maybe, if I didn't have a large collection with everything I could possibly want for the popper format. Anywho, curse flesh, negative one, negative one, and fear. So that's another one of those like good for your creatures or bad for your opponent's creatures. You know, versatile. I like that about black, especially in, in dark ritual and dark banishing. Uh, unfortunately, dark banishing was replaced with and terror were replaced with doomblade because uh, yeah, why not? It's instant, but yeah, so is doomblade and one less. Anyway, Dothy horror. I. I like shadow creatures. I want to see a shadow deck in this format. That'd be great. A 2 1. Can't be blocked by white creatures. I mean, that's. If you're building a shadow deck, you're going to include all four of these in, in the screen here. You know, if you're going to build a black shadow deck. Because shadow is a tempest um, ability, you know? Target creature, or this creature, it's like flying, but. Instead, it's in the shadow realm, which is just can't block or attack regular creatures, only shadow creatures. The Dothy Jackal, sack to destroy a target blocking creature, which there's cards that do that, and I think they're pretty decent, but nobody ever seems to use them. Marauder, Slayer, yeah, they realized these two cards were probably should have never been printed common in the first place. Slayer is like one of my ultimate favorite old cards from that set. I always played a four set of play set of those. Um, Death's Duet. Uh, Font of Return, or I think, is the card that you want to use to pull multiple creatures out of your graveyard it's an enchantment but before that card this was the this would have been the card to use turn two cards from your graveyard to your hand for three and it's better than macabre waltz because you ain't gotta you know the macabre waltz is one and if you're playing with madness then it, it, see, it just depends on what you're playing deathstroke i mean you could play deathstroke or you could just play dothy jackal <laughs> Any, well, then again, it has to be a blocking creature, and this just has to be a tapped. <clears throat> Diabolic Edict, so playable. Disenchant, also very playable and usable. Dream Prowler, can't be blocked as long as it's attacking alone. <clears throat> okay, that is actually good for Tireless Tribe. However, it costs him four. It ain't that great, but... Like, Dromad Purebred is four in a white. For a one five, I the uh, common college color color commentary suggested Dromad purebred, and I actually bought a four playset of those, and that's too blue though. Yeah, if you're playing two colors, it's gonna be tougher to bring out. But yeah, whatever. Dungeon Shade. I don't know why this card isn't seen more play. For one mana, you can make your flyer. For one black mana, you can make a black flyer. And pump it up for each black mana you got laying around. Flying is fucking great in Popper. And, I mean, you can pump him. 
Yeah, he costs four, so what? He's flying. Play with Dungeon Shade, guys. It's awesome. Elven Wright. Two plus one plus one counters for two. I mean, it's better than uh, giving one plus one plus one counter. But it's got to be distributed to two creatures. Or right, one or two. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. God. Uh, I just wouldn't say it's very playable, but you could play with it. I mean, that's maybe in like like an impact deck. <sighs> like regenerate growth or something, but you're, see, you want to free up all your mana as much as you can, and regenerate growth just costs two life. And playing impact, it's like, yeah. Elvish Fury. This one is five for to give your creature plus two plus two till end of turn. Uh, I feel like that would be great in a deck that like is very aggro and runs out of cards fast, but it's just too slow. I mean, you can't buy it back till turn five. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I would. I don't know. Endangered Armadon. I wouldn't say it's playable. Being four for a four or five creature, toughness two or less can't. So, when you control a creature with two or less, second, yeah, not playable. Um, uh, Heaven Cars Justice is playable. Flowstone Blade. Uh, there's better things. Furnace Blood, target creature can't be regenerated this turn. Like, all right, yeah, that was good back then because regenerate was like one of the only main. There were very few abilities back then. Shadow, flying, regenerate, first strike, banding. I mean, that was about the extent of it, it seems like. Buyback was the new mechanic in this set also. I really love the buyback mechanic, even though it's only good for late game stuff. Gaseous Form is a proper playable card, if you ask me, but I've never seen it in a list. You can apply it to your opponent. This is another versatile card. For two and a blue, you can prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to or dealt by Enchanted Creature. It doesn't go away. So you can have... A 1-1 one, one chump turn into a, a superstar on the board. Or you can turn a superstar Ulamog's Crusher into a nothing. <laughs> Except his ability is still in place. and Annihilator 2 ain't fun. So I wouldn't do. I wouldn't suggest putting Gaseous for him on a Ulamog's Crusher. Unless you're just producing three permanents every turn from some artifact or something. But yeah. Gaseous for him though. It's... I mean, there's there's other things that tr that trump it, but still. <clears throat> um, let's see, we got Grave Digger. It's been reprinted a billion times, and three in black for two two it brings a card from the graveyard to your hand. I like Grave Scrabbler better. I wouldn't say he's playable, but he's a zombie. I mean, he's good in zombie builds sometimes. Hammerhead Shark, 2-3 two, for 2. Can't attack unless Defender Player controls an island. That's good in like an Acid Trip deck, maybe. <laughs> but, instead of limiting your ability to attack play, while you're playing Slow Old Blue, I mean, why not just play with a creature that has Island Walk if you're going to play Slow Old Blue anyway? That, you know, like, don't, I wouldn't suggest Hammerhead Shark. It's just... <laughs> Just not worth even picking up and putting into anything. Limited? Yeah, okay, maybe. Harrow, I think, is a good card for a landfall deck, which is another build subtype or whatever you... I can't remember. I don't know. Genre? Harwood Dyad. Dryad. Pff, see, I can't pronounce words. I don't even... I read lazily. I'm just like, all right, I see a, a D, a R, a Y, an A, and a D. Dryad or Dyad or something. <coughs> Oh, and I'm so congested right now. Heartwood Dyad Dryad can block creatures with shadow as though it had shadow. Well, why not just let it have shadow? But uh, because he walks between worlds, he can block shadow and non-shadow. So if you have a shadow creature deck, 
Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe he might be good, like, in a sideboard if Shadow Creature decks were actually a uh, viable metagame deck or whatever, and I'd like to see that day, but we haven't seen that day yet. Horn Sliver. But if you're playing Limited Tempest, then yeah, <laughs> for sure. You're going to see Shadow decks and Limited Tempest plays. Or just, like, even Tempest, like, out of three sets or something like that. Horn Sliver... All slivers have trample. I would definitely include that in a sliver deck that has green, unless the only reason green's in there is for the um, for that rainbow sliver land guy, Jim Hyde Sliver, I think. Yeah. Anyway, Horn Turtle. One four three mana. No, nah, I'd rather just have a zero four for one blue mana. Thanks. Island. Uh, I don't think that's popper playable. Yeah, I mean, just don't, just play like Evolving Wilds or some tap, some lands that come into play tapped instead, they're better. Killer Well, three, that was sarcasm, guys, just so you know. Uh, Killer Well, three and two blue, it gains fine for one blue, it's a three, five, and it's too fucking expensive. Kindle, eh. I like the idea of Kindle, but Accumulated Knowledge and other cards like that are better. But yeah, if you successfully cast four Kindles, or even just dump three in your graveyard, then you could do uh, five damage for two mana. Or you could just play one mana and deal four damage with like Galvanic Blast, or I don't know, plenty of other one drop red or you could just sack two mountains and deal four damage. <coughs> Core Chant. All damage that would be dealt this turn to target creature you control by a source of your choice is dealt to another target creature instead. Yeah. The Core. So badass in this deck. Or this, uh... That was another um, creature type that we had introduced and then taken away forever. Or the Core. With that infinite... Zero cost ability, I just... Ugh. Lab Rats. Not bad, but... There's no... There's no benefit to just playing a rat. <clears throat> other than having a chump blocker. If you're top deck, and then that's okay, but... Probably just get yourself some better rats to play that do stuff. Lightning Blast. Uh, there's so many other red burn spells. There's too many red burn spells to ever really need to play that card, but who am I to judge? Uh, Lotus Petal, fucking awesome. Power 9 card in the Popper realm, if you ask me. It's like Black Lotus for Popper. I don't know why. That and Dark Ritual, I, 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 it baffles me how rarely you see these in builds. Guys, brew some Popper decks. While you're at it, use the Power 9 of Popper. That would be like Lotus Petal, Dark Ritual, I mean, I need to make a Power 9 video, I guess. Like, my Power 9, out of Popper cards. I mean, like, Gush would, or Mold Drifter should probably be in there. I, I'd have to think about that. But, um, Low and Basilic, he's Death Touch before Death Touch existed. He deals damage to a creature, destroy that creature in a combat. So, that's cool. Um... Just has to do damage to a creature. You know what? Feels good on that. Something that lets him ping your creatures. By tapping him. Without having to give them a chance to block. Because, like, first strike against him sucks. But, hey. In Popper, it could... It could easily take two damage, first strike. A lot of first strikers are two or one. Lowland Giant. I have absolutely nothing to say about that pile of vanilla crap. Mage Ilvec. Discard a card at random, and it deals one damage to target creature or player. Yeah, a Timmy. Same exact prodigal sorcerer for red. He's a 2-2. Except you gotta discard a card at random. That's just stupid, okay? Unless you're out of cards. I mean... Can he do damage if you don't have a card in your hand? He, yeah, yeah, he can. He should be able to, I think. 
my friend would try to tell me that that's not possible. It, depending on, uh, you know, if this is like back when these cards were printed, he the way he like was trying to get me under the belief that yeah, if you can't do what the card says, you can't finish off the, the ability or spell if you can't do everything under listed to do. <sighs> and he literally thought that you had to do a planeswalker's ability every turn, no matter what. Manalik two. One and a blue counter target spell. This is controller pays three. Totally usable. Maniacal Rage. Maniacal Rage. Uh, enchant creature gets plus two, plus two, and can't block. So, yeah. You got somebody that's sort of versatile. Like if there's a death touch creature or something and they're just, it's like a one one death touch or whatever. I don't know. Barely versatile, I wouldn't say it's usable. Limited play, but yeah. Master Dickhole. T one and one white. One white, tap target creature and tap Master Dickhole. He's a one, two. Merfolk Looter. One and blue. Draw a card and then discard a card when you tap him. He's a one, one. Both these cards are awesome. Fucking use them. They're great. I love them. Metallic Sliver is also awesome. One for one colorless for a creature that comes into play with all sorts of abilities. As long as uh, you've played other slivers. If you're playing a sliver deck, obviously. They're like, I don't know, everybody that I grew up with playing Magic hated slivers. Like, if you're playing slivers, they just, they would want finish the game. They would just say you win. It's pretty lame. <sighs> All slivers have two sex this permanent, draw a card. Sacrifice this permanent. Or don't you mean it's this creature? Cause whatever. Anyway, yeah. You never know with slivers, they could have printed some shit in this future that all slivers are not creatures, they're artifacts instead or something, yeah. So I guess that's why they worded it that way at the time. Mod conscripts! Very playable in the goblin builds. There's another one that does the same thing. Goblin Cohort. One red gets you a 2-2, but it can't attack unless you cast a spell. Creature spell this turn. Saint Goblin. Mog Fanatic. Very versatile. Great card. Especially when damage was a stackable thing. Mog Flunkies. Awesome, usable. Mountain. I wouldn't use it as toilet paper. Mounted archers, same thing. I mean, yeah, four for reach creature, two, three. Human soldier archer it does have the soldier in there, so it's good for a soldier build. And it can block an additional creature for one white. So that is slightly useful for that one niche. That one. That one type of build, the soldier build. Mulch. Good for a landfall build. If you got a land card, like, especially if you stacked, like, somehow, like, say you could, I don't know, if you brainstorm and you got two lands on top or something, I don't know. I wouldn't use it, personally. Muscle Sliver, totally usable. Nomads in Core. I mean, you know, muscle sliver, you should have four of those in every muscle, any any sliver build that has green. That's just my opinion. Because it's not like we got access to Bad Moon or Crusade here. Nomads and Core. For zero. Think about this, guys. So, the next 100 damage that would be dealt to Nomads and Core this turn is dealt to target creature you control instead. As long as you got a target creature to control. Makes them kind of, um, un. I mean, you know, you can target creature with 100 damage. The next 100 damage goes to that creature. In my opinion, even if that first damage kills the creature, the next 99 are still going to it because it's an ability that you did. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I guess I, I better keep my mouth shut on that. I really don't know, but. There are builds that definitely benefit off of this creature, and uh, 
Infinite Life is one of them. There's several other. It's definitely a brewable card. Pacifism. Ah, oh, the old journey to nowhere. I mean, you know, if you got, if journey to nowhere ain't enough, throw a pacifism or two in there. Patchwork gnomes. Yeah, you can regenerate a card, regenerate by discarding a card. Find a deck that wants to discard cards. A mana spilled, that could be good. Otherwise, that card's not going to see play ever. Six for a 5-4 vanilla. No thanks. Provoke. Tap target creature you don't control. That creature blocks this turn at Fable. Yeah, the old way to make creatures fight. Do it during combat. And then you draw a card. Pretty useful, but not terribly, because there's newer cards that do the same kind of stuff. Rampant Growth. Another good card for landfall, possibly, but I'm sure there's plenty of other cards that you'd rather use. Uh, however, I think it's still great, you know, because you can evolve in wilds, forest, then say you already, you're on your third turn, and you, you got rampant growth in hand, and a creature that came out last turn that costs two, and <coughs> has a landfall ability. Then yeah, fuck yeah, play a rampant growth, put another creature, another land into play. Ah, uh, Rats of Wrath, destroy target artifact creature or land you control. I honestly don't know why they made this card. However, Eker Wellspring is good for that. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. Although I'm sure there's a couple cards I'm missing that does make sense <sighs> body anchor I don't even think this is worth putting in a sideboard until shadow decks become a thing then maybe uh, till then I mean shit the only card there's a, a deck that, tireless tribe uses shadow rift so like yeah if tribe became a huge problem you could maybe, like, basically, yeah, you still wouldn't want to put even one reality anchor in your sideboard. You just maybe carry a counter spell or something like that. <laughs> or Pyroblast. Rolling Thunder. Great card. X and two red. Deal X damage. Divide it as you choose among any number of target creatures and or players. Root Baker Worm. Root Breaker Worm. Root Baker. He's going to bake you a cake. And he's going to hit you with 6-6 six, six Trample. But he's going to cost you 7 to come out. If only you had Convoke. I guess you could cheat him out with a uh, Exum, and that would be cool. Because he's like, almost, he's bigger than Gurmag, and he's smaller than Olmog. But he'd be better if he had cycling. Uh, anyway, Root Walla, not usable. Root Water Hunter, that's another pinger. I mean, yeah. If you don't have a Prodigal Sorcerer, Root Water Hunter will do you just fine. Sandstone Warrior, pumpable. Plus one, plus zero. Oh, his first strike, so it really doesn't matter about his defense. <sighs> but it's still not very usable. Sadly, the same as can be said about Serivner. You know, uh, instant card instead of sorcery. If you're playing Is It, then yeah, Serivner and Anarchist and Mnemonic Walls. But what chances are if you're playing Mnemonic Wall, you're playing a Ghostly Flicker, and then may as well just have a bunch of Mnemonic Walls so you can decide if you want a sorcery or instant. Yeah. Of course, this. Whatevers. Sea Monster ain't going to see no play. Uh, just not. Seething Anger. Yeah, no. Four for three plus three plus zero. No. Don't think so. Better, plenty of better things. Think thing with Serpent War. Three for a three three and you lose three. Um, <laughs> it's funny. I actually thought this was the stupidest thing about black, but I built a black deck that had nothing but creatures that deal damage to you when they come out. 
and it was super aggro, and it actually, before, I mean, I'd be down to like three life, but I would be doing so much nasty damage to my opponent that if they didn't, if they couldn't keep up, it was just a quick game and it was over, and I was like really surprised because I just put nothing but cards that dealt damage to me. And I would like to rebuild that one day. I don't know if I could do that popper style, but it was kind of neat. There was a lot of stuff that just didn't let it do anything, though. I mean, there were so many counter spell decks out back then, too. Shackles. Creature doesn't untap during its controller's unstep. Step, and you can pay one to return it to your hand. From the graveyard, even. It's pretty useful. Shadow Ref, very useful. One blue will turn a creature into a shadow, and you get to draw a card. Tireless Tribe loves that card. Shatter, destroy target artifact. No. There's plenty of other things that destroy artifacts for... I mean, yeah, it's the red distance. I mean, if you're not playing white, then yeah. Back then, this saw a lot of play, but not anymore. Sift. Three and a blue, draw three cards, and discard a card. If you don't have any other way to dig, I guess this could be brewable. I didn't put it's four, so. But yeah, late game, that feels all right. You know, you're drawing three and then you filter out one, you take the best of two out of three. I mean, if you're late game top deck and it doesn't matter that it costs four, but I wouldn't put more than like one or two in a deck. Sky Shaper, two mana. Sack it, creatures you control, gain fly until in a turn. And they downshifted that. That was an uncommon card. And I like this card. And it's good in some uh, very select few decks. So it is brewable, like in Goblins, if you're using, like, uh, Kodothal Rebirth. <clears throat> Unfortunately, it'd be much better if it, like said, when it goes to the graveyard, instead of sacrifice it to make creatures you control have flying. Can you imagine sacking a, that to Kadothal Rebirth to get three goblin token creatures? And maybe like a bushwhacker to give them all haste and plus one plus oh. And then it hits the graveyard and all your creatures are flying too. Oh, that's just too powerful. Sky Shroud off? Yeah, right. Get a clue. I mean, come on, really? Land where else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you want to filter your land, then get a Prophetic Prism or something. I don't know. You'd think that'd be usable, but it's really just not. Um, Sky Shroud. Sky Shroud Troll. Four for a 3-3. Three, three. You can regenerate him for two. Solid, but just slow. If it was three for a 3-3. Three, three. That would be solid as hell. That would be playable. If it was two for a 3-3, three, three, it'd be in like every stompy green deck you ever found. Just about, maybe. I don't know. Smite, one to destroy target blocked creature. That works great with a plant token, but you never gonna, I don't think it's going to see play. Saltari Lancer. Sorry, I don't know if you got the memo, Lancer, but white... Shadow creatures uh, have been hated on by black shadow creatures, so you're the weakest link. Um, Soltari Trooper. I mean, they're still good. They're shadows. Spell Blast. It's like Condescend. Or whatever. Not Condescend. Wow, it gives you an example. For example, if that spell's mana cost is 3 and 2 blue, it X is five. Duh. Jeez. There's also um, Power Sync. It was the same thing. We used Power Sync, Spell Blast, and Counter Spell back in those days. And Mana Leak. Mana Leak and uh, Disrupts. Yeah. Spike Colony. Four, 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 five. And. They share the plus one, plus ones. You, the spikes should have taken off better, but they just didn't spike. I think they're neat, but they're too fringe. They just, I mean, Spinal Graph would be a better card to use. Creature gets plus three, plus three, and then, 
When a chain or creature becomes a target, but destroy it. It can't be generated. It can't be generated, lazy talk person. No, but I mean, two. Yeah, it stays on it. And he's, say he's a hex proof or whatever, then it's like, cool. There's your insurance plan to just basically. I mean, if you're playing hex proof, that's a great card to put in a hex proof deck. I don't know. Just my opinion. Five for a five four. Vanilla. Pretty art. Yeah, but it could, it might as well be like a popsicle stick guy. Because they ain't got no ability. Spirit Encore. Yeah, the other Encore that's totally playable and popper. Flying 2 2. Prevent. As many times as you want, you can take the next one damage and just keep going that way. <sighs> a Vigilance 1 4 for 3. I guess that's another Tireless Tribe kind of card, but. Yeah, I don't know. Four damage for three. Eh, it's still just nah. Staunch Defenders. Another one I don't remember. It must be a rare common, but when it enters the battlefield, gain four life for five, three, four. Not very helpful there. Stun. I never used that card. I was stunned that they even printed it. Target creature can't block for a turn. Draw a card. Telethopter, don't know this one either. Tap an untapped creature you control, it gains flying until end of turn. It must have been uncommon. Tap an untapped creature you control, Telethopter gains flying until end of turn. Telethopter is not very useful. Uh, actually, well, 4 for a 3 1, yeah, just, it's too, just, cup, it's just one mana too much. The Lacos Scout. 3 for a 2-1. Discard a card, turn it to your hand. 2-1. Yeah, that's pretty good. The Seer, when it leaves play, draw a card. It's shadow for 2 mana, you get a 1-1. One, one. Let's draw when it dies, or when it leaves play. So bounce it back, play it again. Bounce it back, play it again. Draw some cards, pretty decent. Thrill Surgeon is like a duress on a body. Uh, except you can choose any card from their hand, and it doesn't cost you three. Uh, I, it's not ever used. Uh, I'm baffled. Two and a blue, you can put target creature on top of its owner's library. That's cheaper than Cheddaring Rats. Now that would be a way... Uh, you, could, you could basically lock out your opponent without cheddar, the Cheddaring Rat combo, I think. With Time Ebb, and Mnemonic Wall, and Ghostly Flicker... Some Sunscape Familiars and some Snaps. You could probably just go infinite and just like make it to where their hand just stays on top of the library probably. Lock them out of play. That'd be pretty funny. I'm not going to sit here and do the math, people, to figure out if that's actually something that can be done. I feel like it is, though. And I don't know why that one doesn't see... Oh, well, you know, it's creature, not something in your hand. I don't know how I skipped over that fine detail. <coughs> Three, three for three. Wow. Woe is me. If only it was one green instead of two. It's still... It's not that playable, Vanilla, unless unless we had Murragana Petroglyph. Now that is a card I used a lot in my Selesnia enchantment build. But that is a conversation topic for another day. Tranquility is effing great. Just destroy all enchantments, you know? Oh, you're playing Bogles. All right, cool. Oh, you're going to attack me with your Amarillo, Amarillo Cloak? Cool. Yeah, I'm going to just destroy all the enchantments there. Oh, and then I'm going to play a Nausea. Oh, guess what? Green, black, coming back. Twitch. You man tap target creature, artifact, or land. Draw a card. You may also just choose not to ever twitch anything, ever, because Twitch is stupid. Talking about the website, haha. <laughs> not, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm. That was total sarcasm. We're gonna grow that to just not anytime soon, because I want to build my YouTube first. Anyway, Vampire Hounds is a neat card that I loved from back in the day, but I think there's other Nantico Husk or whatever does the same thing. I think he's cheaper too. 
but it's sort of brewable. You could use it. Verdi Gris. I never heard of this card. Destroy target artifact. No, it's just not very usable. I mean, uh. There's that one weird song one. Jeez, I got another 60 cards? I'm at the V's already. Vorath's Curse. Enchanted creature can't attack or block. Its activability and abilities can't be activated. That creature's controller may sack a permanent for that player to ignore this effect until end of turn. That is very fucking cool. It's a journey to nowhere, but hey, if you want to go ahead and sack something, then it's not a journey to nowhere for one turn. But then next turn, guess what? It's a journey to nowhere all over again. I like that. Like, sack some land, you know? Sack a creature, sack a chump, sack a token. That, I don't know why that never sees play. I didn't even know that was, uh, I, I reprinted as an uncommon. I'm sure it was common back in the day. Wall of Fusion. Can block creatures with shadow. Cool. So red's got one and green's got one. Whoopie do. Well, the wall, yeah, it blocks shadows. It's not usable unless shadows become a meta thing. Okay, four cards left. I can't believe it. No, five. Wayward Soul is not a useful card in any way, shape, or form. You can put it on top of your library. Okay. For one blue. So, yeah, I guess if you're going against Mill, then sure. Whispers of the Muse. Six mana will let you draw a card and keep that in your hand for the next turn. Or you could just buy back a capsize and take away one of your opponent's permanents. <coughs> one Drake, two, two for three. Flying. Wing Sliver was totally the, the go to evasion card for slivers back in the day and we did white blue green because those were the colors for slivers to really be viable i mean you can still put jim hyde sliver in there but white blue green was the viable plan youthful night sort of sweet but only because it's ancient memories for me first strike two one for two i mean it's basically a bear first strike and it's a knight. If only it was a soldier. And that's my review of Tempest Remastered. And, yep. Almost as good. The set is almost as good as Ultimate Master. No. No, I take that back. I. No, there's probably only about 15 cards in this set that are even really usable, brewable. My favorites from this set really are. Um, favorites only because of previous memories um so i'm a little bit or what's the word for it prejudiced but cards that really stick i mean counter spell was a reprint back then so that doesn't count like but reprints aside um and downshifts included into this I really like. I swear they don't have power sync in that set. The Encore were really great. There's only two. You know, I, for some reason I thought there were more. I guess they were printed in Stronghold Holden Exodus. Stronghold! 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 It's weird they didn't remaster Stronghold or Exodus unless they started right then. I don't know. As far as top five, I couldn't tell you. There's just not very many good cards in this set. Looking back at them all, I'm trying to think what a, a top five. I can't believe it's actually surprising with this set, you know, because it's the first of three, and the first three were usually big, fat. And then the second, like, it would be like 250 or so, and then the second two would be like 125 cards in the set. So I guess that makes sense because it's like 100 some cards. Cap size is definitely on the top five. I don't know where. Um, Dark Ritual is a reprint, so I can't conclude that. Uh, Dalty Sliver. Diabolic Edict. It's definitely top five. 
I want to put Dungeon Shade in the honorable mention category, okay? Evan Carr's Justice, there's, there, I got three out of five, all right? Um, got to look at all of them, though. I'll pick two more cards from this set. Lotus Petal, obviously. Lotus Petal would be, like, number one or number two. Manly could be number three, or number, whatever. Manly could be included. Um, I almost want to say Muscle Sliver. Rolling Thunder, there we go. Yeah, Rolling Thunder is, yeah, definitely a top five card. So there you have it. There's my top five out of the set. I mean, another honorable mention would have been one of the Timmy's. Maybe Shadow Rift or Sky Shaper. But yeah, there you go. Uh, that is my review of Tempest. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for sticking around with me till the end. This is actually not very entertaining. I think I'm going to jump straight to another set review. I think I'm going to do Masters 25 next just because I want to pick on that set hardcore because it sucked, in my opinion. At least for uh, just, yeah, they ruined it for me, at least. <laughs> Anywho, thank you. Ta-ta. Have a nice day, and we'll see you next time.